change is sometimes called the man who designed everything. I got into this game at a time when there were very few of us and I managed to build a reputation by the funny accident of being asked to do a big variety of things. You name it, I did almost anything in sight. From kitchen appliances to parking meters, from disposable razors to bus shelters. How many drops of rain have I saved for falling on people? And if it's not quite a big enough roof to keep them all dry, I've, you know, I've got to have a good answer for that. In the post-war era, Kenneth Grange has been Britain's moderniser in chief. It's silly, isn't it? Such a simple thing. But how sharp you can make this cut-off here, the actual importance in the whole thing, and therefore what the designer ought to spend a lot of time worrying about, is how well it pours. Kenneth Grange believes that designers should have to live with what they design. You'll notice a big mouth here to get the water in easily. Very important. And for the past 20 years, he's been using the Kenwood kettle he designed to make himself tea, along with millions of others around the world. Magic click. Lift it off. Pour the lovely water through the lovely spout. Cut off neatly, you see, no, no dribbles. And we're in business. people who'd been making armaments went back to what they used to make, which was in one case, I know, the irons for ironing your clothes. Between the time that I was given the job of updating the electric iron and its original inception, it was probably 30-something years, newness was a word that we might well have used instead of design. Design was a very little used uh, word in our language at the time. Hey, lady, forget all that. Meet the swinging, mixing, mincing, slicing, shredding Kenwood chef. Behind the cult status of some of his design successes, such as the Kenwood chef, are savvy insights into the psyche of consumers, which go deeper than appearances. We read a lot into the weight of things. So when you pick something up, you, in that moment, you make an assumption about its value slightly heavier, says longer life, better value, etc., etc. So I ask them to use a particular material that is heavier and certainly weightier in the fingers. And it's over-engineered to the point where it'll last through two or three generations. Now, sooner or later, uh, that gets to be known in the marketplace. What better merit can you give a product than knowing it's actually going to outlast you? Is there anything the Kenwood chef can't do? Since the 1960s, disposable razors have grown into a multi-billion pound industry. And Kenneth Grange came up with several compelling designs. It's such a big business that um, anything goes. If you make a blunder and you go to the market with a, with a razor with ten blades um, and you get some bad press because somebody quite rightly points out that eight of them don't do anything at all, then you can go back to the market with two, but two new super blades. A major commercial success was the Wilkinson Chrome Protector. I think you always aim to tell different stories. So the Chrome version, for example, implies that it has a longer life, which then reflects upon the cutting efficiency of the blades. Behind that little thing that you scrape your face with, it's a set of miracles of engineering. And I've often got the glory when, in fact, the real heroes are the people who invented the thing in the beginning. <laughs>